Welcome back to GEMS with Genesis Amaris Kemp. With me today is Tania Donato, and we're going to be talking about from small town Texas to footprints on the moon. But before we jump into it, here's a bit about Tania. Da -na 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 -na. Get ready, y'all, because she is a woman on the mission. Tania is a junior at Stanford University from Southeast Texas, and she is majoring in material science and engineering with the goal of focusing on aerospace industry application. She is a 2021 Brooke Owens Fellow, having interned at SpaceX this previous summer and will be returning next summer. At Stanford, she is as part of the Stanford Student Space Initiative, also known as SSI, on the satellites, Mars, and diversity, equity, and inclusion teams. Additionally, she is an undergraduate researcher in Stanford's Extreme Environment Microsystems Laboratory, or XLAB. Beyond space-related activities, she participates in the Stanford Acts Committee the Black Recruitment and Orientation Committee's Big Sib, Lil Sib program and has danced to sold out audiences with the Chocolate Heads Movement Band. Wow, y'all told y'all, wait, but there's more. Outside of school, she has served as a mentor for the Champion Project, mentoring high school students through the college admission process. She also loves to write and perform poetry. I may get her to drop a few bars, who knows? <laughs> Having multiple publications online and in print. And without further ado, please welcome Tania Donata to the platform. Hello, Genesis. Thanks for having me today. Um, super excited to get this conversation going. My pleasure. And just reading your bio was just a bit of what you do. You are definitely more than just a bio and you have a lot of things going on in your wheelhouse on the forefront as well as behind the scenes. So tell us why um, you rocked out with the title Small Town Texas to Footprints on the Moon. What's your mission behind that? Yeah, of course. Um, so as you said in my bio, I'm from Southeast Texas, but I'm from small town Southeast Texas. Um, so shout out to Ames, Texas uh, with a population of less than like 1500. Um, and so it's really amazing to me that, you know, it's like this, this du duality between me coming from that small town and, you know, this summer working on building the world's largest rocket. Um, and I really like this quote um, I, that I keep using to motivate me, you know, don't tell me the sky is a limit when there are footprints on the moon. It was in my graduation speech. I think about it all the time. Um, and so it really exemplifies, you know, that movement from the small town to doing all the things that I am doing, especially some of the things you pointed out in my bio. So that's like one of the quotes that I really live by um, to keep me going and doing all these things. So what was your inspiration to get into the field of study that you chose? Do you know anyone else that is in the field or was it just a fascination that you had when you were just growing up? Right. So when I was looking for colleges and like majors and all that stuff, my senior year of high school or a little before that, um, I really thought about just making things, you know, in when I was little in elementary school, middle school, um, and high school, of course, I would always flip the channel to like the science channel. I would be watching, you know, how it's made, Mythbusters, Modern Marvels, um, and all those shows. And I was really fascinated in like the process of making things out of different materials, um, the process from me going like to one stage to the finished product. And I was like, what, what can I do with this um, in the future? And how can I be a part of this process um, in many different ways? And I was also like very interested in a lot of fields, uh, renewable energy, sustainability, and aerospace. I got into aerospace again as a child. Um, we are in close proximity to Houston and we were afforded opportunities to go to Space Center Houston, you know, get to see like the space shuttle um, exhibits, presentations um, about all these things regarding space. And so that's what started that fascination a little bit, along with a very, very high quality Toys R Us telescope. <laughs> um, and 
by just being able to look up and see things a little bit closer. And so combining those things, I was like, oh, what can I do that would still having the breadth um, to be able to go into other fields that aren't just aerospace. And so when I was looking at schools, um, I came across the major material science and engineering. And that definitely gives you the versatility to go into any of those fields. Um, even if like, I, I want to stop working in aerospace some, for some reason, um, I could, you know, go into sustainability, renewable energy, um, batteries, like stuff like that. I like that because it sounds like you were, you thought about it, not very hard and you investigated it you did your research because you're like okay if I choose not to go down the aerospace route I'm gonna have a backup plan because I could go into other areas and for those who may be listening or viewing this segment please explain what material science and engineering is so they don't just think oh man it just flew over my head because we you know the mission here on this um podcast and platform is to educate inspire and motivate and just hearing a brief segment of your story is inspiration to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. So um, broadly, material science engineering, its application is to improve like old materials and aid in the development of new materials. Um, so a lot of what goes into that school-wise, um, academically, like all my classes is, you know, learning about material properties, learning about um, the forces associated with um, these different materials and how they break, you know, fail, fracture, and how, how do we avoid that in certain situations? Um, how do we like model those, those phenomenon that we see in real life um, and apply those to the materials that we make um, now and in the future? So that's like kind of a broad overview of that. <laughs> Thank you so much for explaining that. And I'm going to hit you with this question. So ha have you seen the movie Hid Hidden Figures? I have. So when you think about the movie Hidden Figures and you think about the work that you're doing at school to educate yourself, the stuff that you do in your community via community outreach and et cetera, and all the incredible things that you have going on in, under, in and under your umbrella, how does the movie Hidden Figures personally connect you with the aerospace feel if at yeah. all <laughs> yeah it definitely does I've watched it a few times I think I watched it in theaters then again on my own and then again with some friends and so yeah that movie really hits home especially you know being a black woman in STEM in general but also especially in the aerospace industry um I think that like the movie portrays you know the people who were like behind the scenes at the time um, and I definitely feel like a little bit, like I relate to that <laughs> a little bit because there are, you know, very few like black women in, in the aerospace industry, especially just like looking around, you know. Um, but I think that it's cool to like see people who are, who, who are like doing the things that you're doing and with similar backgrounds as you. And so I was really inspired to like, go harder um, in, in my like education, in my um, endeavors and outreach and all that stuff. And so it's, I really think that we're on the path to, you know, increasing that diversity in the aerospace industry. And there's also a really good community, you know, especially at work, there was a, like a tight knit community um, with the black community there. And we, we all relate um, to those similar like ideas and struggles and like imposter syndrome even. Um, but I think it's really important to like talk to people, um, fig figure out like the similar struggles that we've been going through um, and just work hard to be like recognized, um, work hard to like for yourself as well. Um, that was something that I really pushed for myself like in conversations that I had at night to myself um, is to continue working that like hard, just like the woman in Hidden Figures and get the recognition that they deserve, get the recognition I deserve um, and, and contribute to the overall goal of whatever project I'm a part of because that end result is very valuable to me just looking back on it and being like, oh shoot, I was a part of that. <laughs> um, and so I think that's what, what motivates me as well. 
Be- oh my gosh, just beautiful. Because like when we do something, even if we don't get all the accolades that we want to get by us creating our own imprint, it's driving an impact. And that impact is causing you and your team to be world changers. Because if it wasn't for you speaking up, if it wasn't for you saying, oh, well, there's not a seat at the table for me, I'm going to make my own table and pull up my own seat. Just going the extra mile, because sometimes it's not just about Tania, it's not just about Genesis, but it's about us laying a sturdy foundation for those who are coming along besides us and behind us. And by you relating to that movie, Hidden Figures, although some people would say that it's a movie, to them it's just a movie. But to us, it's actually real life because it's actually what happens to us behind the scenes that never gets brought to the forefront unless something were to happen. And I feel like being a person of color, but also being first generation American and having parents who are foreigners, it's like when you see a Black woman who is trying to break into a particular space, like, for example, oil and gas, aerospace, construction, or whatever the um, case may be, even though we are a woman, we're a minority in a male-dominated field, but then if you add our color on top of that, that's already another layer of us having to fight twice as hard, work twice as hard, not just to be seen, but to be heard as well without having the microaggressions of, oh, she's aggressive or she's an angry black woman or having to constantly prove ourselves day in and day out in comparison to our colleagues that are non-melanated. So when you think about the things that you do as far as outreach activities, what are some areas that you're really advocating in so you could see the change as well as be the change you want to see? Um, so I think some of my work um, with the Stanford Student Space Initiative has really been excellent um, for this. And I just want to go back to what I talked about earlier is, you know, seeing seeing like the people that with similar backgrounds as you um, in the present day and seeing that reflected in yourself and be like, oh, I can do that too. Um, so a lot of the outreach that I have done there, um, not with the DI work, but on like some of the project teams that I've been on, have been outreach for like elementary schoolers um, and also high schoolers who are about to, you know, apply to college and go to college. Um, and it's really cool to see them like interact with the research, interact with the people who we are, you know. I give them my contact information if they ever need help um, with something. You know, I mentor for the Champion Project, which is a nonprofit organization um, that helps juniors now, um, but also seniors through the college admission process, particularly from first and low income backgrounds or people of color, underrepresented minorities. And um, it's really cool to be able to give back my experience and knowledge um, to those people who are really seeking it and really want it um, and who may not have been exposed to it otherwise. And so it's really a valuable experience for me to be able to give back um, in those ways. Um, additionally, like with my lab, done some outreach uh, for this organization called Scientific Adventures for Girls um, that focuses on STEM outreach um, for like girls interested in like science, technology, uh, art, engineering, math. I mean, it's really, really cool <laughs> to see like, you know, a room full of like these future scientists, uh, mathematicians, engineers who are very interested in the topics and just to be like, oh, one day, you know, they might be in my shoes. One day they might be like on a podcast with Genesis. <laughs> um, one day, um, you know, they might be in machine control. And it's, you know, it's interesting to think about when you're, you know, presenting in front of um, these audiences, whether it's like elementary, middle school or high school. Um, and so that's like some of the things that I've been doing um, with my DEI work in um, Stanford Student Space Initiative, because there is like a big pipeline, you know, from, from the organization to like different places in the aerospace industry, just by like way of being a space club. Um, and I think that um, we've been really trying to extend our resources, whether they are um, like workshop knowledge, knowledge from like our members, um, being able to, you know, have that accessible on a public platform like YouTube. Um, so we have some things posted there that have been internal, but you know, 
providing them externally so a large audience can see them. Um, and then just, you know, giving a workshop um, for leadership so we can be a more inclusive community and really, you know, be that change we want to see in the world. You know, it might not be the same in industry, but at least we want to be able to provide that inclusive, diverse, um, and equi equitable community in um, a club. And it's a very large club um, like SSI. And um, that's like super important to me, uh, super important to a lot of people on the team. Um, and yeah, that's that's a, a lot of what I've been doing with the outreach um, and DEI work, but very passionate about it and very glad that I'm being able to, you know, play my part in change, changing that landscape. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm trying not to be emotional, but as you were talking, like the tears are swelling up in my eyes. And the reason why it was is because I am super passionate about diversity, equity, and inclusion coming from a Fortune 500 oil and gas company where I face systemic racism. And when I spoke up, I just got labeled as, you know, aggressive or, you know, the angry black woman and stuff like that. And that led me to writing my book, Chocolate Drop in Corporate America from the Pit to the Palace, because it wasn't just about the situation that I went went through. It was about how do I share my story to help empower somebody else, to inspire them that even though somebody sees you a certain way, you have to see yourself for who you are and not what they want you to be. And don't fall victim to somebody else because they can't see why the vision inside of you is so bright and why your light um, is going to illuminate those dark seasons and change the world. And I feel like that that's where imposter syndrome comes in because sometimes some people they know what they want to do, but they've heard so many negative um, voices. They've heard so many things like in social on social media, as well as in society. And all of those things are building up. And before you know it, they're believing that and they're doubting themselves. And in actuality, they need to be, you know, like Tania. They're not going to be you because there's only one you. And there's no sense of them being a carbon copy, but they need to hear these real conversations. They need to hear courageous conversation and they need to see somebody that's doing it and so as you speak with eloquence and you're so passionate about what you're doing at school what you're doing at work what you're doing in the community it just warms my heart and it brings me to tears because I'm like oh man looking back years ago what was I what was I doing you know and I was like, oh, maybe I had imposter syndrome. Maybe, you know, I was dealing with some stuff where I felt like, you know, my voice was muted for a bit. But then there comes a period in your life where you're like, you know what, YOLO, you only live once. Like, I'm going to do the damn thing. And I'm going to be that woman that people may talk about. They're either going to love me or hate me, like 50 Cent says, but I'm going to make it to the top. <laughs> and so whenever you're talking, I was like, oh, my gosh, like, this is so this is so real. This is so true and to just see a young powerhouse like just making moves breaking barriers and rising above limitations it's just incredible Tania and I want to dive a little bit deeper because I know you're passionate about STEM and then you mentioned STEAM and for those of you who are listening STEAM is science technology engineering arts and mathematics, but there are some STEM people who don't like STEAM because they feel like, why is arts in there? So can you debunk the two STEM versus STEAM? <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's really funny. So um, I think I'm more like STEAM than STEM. And I think STEAM is very important because in the realm of STEM, things can get super, super technical and you can lose a lot of people just from like spewing all that math, engineering, uh, uh, jargon and stuff. But I think really when the art comes in, that draws more people into the field um, for that like don't necessarily have like a, a wild technical background, um, especially in the realm of science communication, you know? um being able to like we need we need artists <laughs> we need you know the writers um the journalists to be able to communicate things effectively um we need like the poets I'm a poet I like mixing you know science with poetry um I'm like cooking up something in the background regarding that so I'm just gonna put that on the record I'm excited about that adventure um and so 
Yeah, there's something really artsy about a lot of things in STEM, especially aerospace, like the pictures, um, the, the inspiration that you can draw from that. Um, what just launched was like inspiration for, um, I don't know if anybody on, on listening to this keep, keeps up with that, but I definitely look into that. Um, one of my inspirations, Dr. Cyan Proctor was part of that crew and she was painting like in space and she's also a poet and now she's an astronaut. And so she really, really inspires me, um, in, in a lot of those ways on like the STEM to STEAM path. Um, and so yeah uh, i think steam is very important and not just STEM. but that's just my opinion <laughs> oh nice okay i had it backwards y'all i thought she was more focused on stem but now we pulled it out <laughs> she's really focused on steam because she wants to put the arts in the mix and two organizations that i want you to look up to nia that i think you'll be great for um black girls do engineering so i actually had the founder on the podcast her name is cara branch and she's also on linkedin and she started her nonprofit, which is black girls do engineering i think that will be a great resource for you to partner with and connect with since y'all are both in you know that um field engineering and etc then the other initiative that i recently tapped into is color of change so they have them on the west coast east coast down south and then up north <laughs> and right now one of our focus is to eliminate student debt because right now we know that looking at the statistics african-american and people of color pay a substantially higher amount for education in comparison to our non-melanated counterparts and so we are pushing for the government and administration to scale back on the amount that we are paying for education because you spend all this money on education whether it's by way of a bachelor's a master's and a doctorate but whenever you get your credentials you can't find a job that will afford you the ability to pay that amount of money that you spent so some of the ladies that I've been tapping in where they're saying, oh, I have six figures of student loan debt. I have this amount. But if I didn't have this debt, then I could, you know, diversify, diversify the money that I'm making. I could invest in those stocks and bonds. I could purchase my home. I could do so many other things if I was not tied to student loan debt. And then the next thing that they're going to focus on, because we're both from Texas, is the abortion ban. So they're doing a lot of things um, via different campaigns and etc and since you are a wild card because you have a lot of things going on I would love to see you partner with color of change and see how you could really affluence and right now you're you're also able to host your own black women's brunch they give you all the tools and the resources to talk about the different campaign and you could just spread awareness with some of your girlfriends it's a good time for y'all to get together in fellowship but then talk about a situation that really matters that is taking place because if we don't talk about this you don't know what you don't know. Kind of like aerospace. I didn't know all of these incredible things that go on. And I'm just so glad you're bringing this to the forefront. And that's how we begin to inspire other people. That's how we begin to motivate other people to look into certain things. And like you were mentioning, the lady who, you know, was painting in space, then she was doing poetry and now she's an astronaut. That's incredible. So yeah, drop her name in the chat because I want to put that in the show notes so people could know more about her and do their due diligence and research what she's doing. And as we are beginning to wind down, do you want to close us out with some poetry? <laughs> um, I didn't prepare anything. No but, pressure. <laughs> yeah, but I can drop a link to some of my published poems. Um in the chat so it's linktree slash like tania donato um so if you want to like go look at that I'll, I'll give you the link um but there's some floating out there in the public <laughs> they click and read them um okay so yeah. i will do that um so you're so there's no pressure there i wasn't <laughs> sure if you had any bars ready off the cuff <laughs> And then um, I'm going to close this out by playing a fun game. So do you have a little bit of extra time? Sure, sure. So let's do it. 10 questions with Jen, the host with the mostest. So that's Genesis, y'all. So numero uno. <laughs> Favorite color? Purple. Ooh, purple rain, purple. Yes, yes. <laughs> Favorite vacation? Um, Favorite vacation, Disney World. Disney World. Okay, have you been to Disneyland? 
I haven't, even though okay. I've been in California this, this whole time. I'm not. <laughs> okay. Three. Why did you choose Stanford? Stanford. Um, it gave me the the freedom to go ahead and change majors and it, while exploring a lot of things. So you're not locked into like a set curriculum path. So it had a lot of opportunities with that. Great weather, great people. <laughs> or daddy's girl or mommy or mommy's girl. And why? Um, mommy's girl. <laughs> I could talk to her about anything. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> So big uh, five, biggest inspiration. Biggest inspiration, Dr. Proctor, who I just talked about, um, the woman of hidden figures and my mom. <laughs> awesome. Six, dream car. Dream car. Mm, this is interesting. Maybe like a nice, like small size truck. I think those are cool. Like, okay, with you being from Texas, when you say nice, small size truck, you know, <laughs> down here in Texas, we ride jacked up trucks. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> the big old tractor tires or whatnot, lift kits. <laughs> yeah, not the lift kits. Um, yeah, like, like, you know, like a decent sized truck, like a Nissan, a Toyota, you know, so I can haul things maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Y'all, she's practical, y'all. She's practical, <laughs> dual, dual purposes. So she didn't say a Lamborghini, a Bugatti, Mercedes, but she said a nice mid-sized truck. Okay. Yeah. Utility, function, <laughs> it looks nice. Seven, are you currently dating? Um, <laughs> we'll say yeah. <laughs> Is he in aerospace too? <laughs> Um, yeah, you can say that. <laughs> mm. Okay, she's dating y'all. So for those bachelors listening, she is off the market at this time. There's no ringy on her finger, but she's currently dating. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> hey, but you know what they say? If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Eight, favorite food. Ooh, favorite food. I had some like stuffed pasta the other day and it was really good. It's like a variety of pastas. That sounds good. So you're an Italian type of gal. Yeah, yeah. It's good food. <laughs> Nine. If you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? Um, probably like a do-over button because <laughs> sometimes you just make these tiny mistakes. <laughs> um, and I mean, they're fine. They're fine in the moment. I'm, I'm surviving. Everything is fine after my little mistakes. But like sometimes you just want to redo it and pretend it never happened. So yeah, like a do-over button. Okay, so question there. We're going to elaborate a, a <laughs> bit there. So if you had a do-over button and you had the chance to do it over again, that is going to rewrite your future. So if you hit that right. do-over but button and your future is re rewritten, would you like it how it's rewritten? And would you want to have a back over button? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess when I was talking about doer button, it was like tiny things like misspeaking <laughs> or like um, falling off my bike or, or something like that. Um, so I don't think my future will be rewritten too much. Maybe like, yeah. <laughs> so I, I think it'd be fine. Both, both futures would be fine. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Awesome thoughts. I, I just wanted to, to put that one in there. And then 10. Bonus question. This is where you can ask me anything you want to know. Oh. Okay. Um, well, what what is your favorite memory? It's like a Ooh. deep one. <laughs> okay, so my favorite memory right now is my dad walking me down the aisle in 2018. And the reason why that's my favorite me memory currently is because my dad passed away last year in November due to medical negligence. So I remember seeing my dad so happy at the wedding, walking before he got paralyzed from the waist down and his whole entire life shifted up until you know my dad passing away in November so when I think about that it takes me back to the happy place because I remember how he was laughing we were doing like our dancing a lot of my family came 
wedding. Came into town for the wedding. Um, they started a Congo line, even though I didn't want a Congo line started at the wedding and just different things. So when I think about that, I'm like, oh man, it was just amazing. And I'm just so grateful he got to walk me down the aisle. And even though he's not here, which makes me angry in a sense, because I was like, man, dad spent so many times like with my brother's kids, my sister's kids. He'll never get to like, you know, spend time with my kids because I don't have any kids yet. I'm on renakid.com. And I'm like, man, who's going to teach my kids Spanish or whatnot? Because my dad was from Curacao. So right off the tip of Venezuela, and he spoke four languages. And I'm so Americanized. And um, here at home, we only spoke English because my mom is Caribbean and she only spoke English. So primarily going up in the house, we spoke that. So just like kind of thinking about how, you know, how we planned the wedding and led up to that, that really sticks to me. So whenever I'm feeling down and I feel like, oh man, I wish I could call my dad or whatnot. I think about, you know, all the happy times we share together. Well, sorry to hear about the passing, but that was a really beautiful memory. Thanks for sharing. My pleasure. And I want you to close us out, Tania, with one to two gems and then tell the listeners and viewers once again who you are, how they could connect with you on social media. Yeah, of course. Um, I guess just like some good pieces of advice going forward that I've gotten is, you know, especially when applying for things like that, it's just like go for it. The worst that could happen is they say no. Um, and then also, if you want something done well, or if you want something done, do it yourself. Um, so it's like kind of my, one of my philosophies from growing up um, that really helped me in the industry. Um, and yeah, so my name is Tania Donato. I am a junior at Stanford University, majoring in material science engineering, working in the aerospace industry. And you can reach me on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, and Instagram and it's just like my name so you can look that up Tania Donato or Tania Donato underscore and looking forward to connecting with anybody listening. And there you have it, listeners and viewers of Gems with Genesis Amaris Kemp. I just had Tania Donato, and we talked about from small town Texas to footprints on the moon because she says, don't tell me the sky's the limit when there's footprints on the moon. So I hope this conversation gave you some much needed information about STEAM versus STEM, about breaking into the science communication arena you know, debunking the myths around aerospace or any other unconscious biases that you had in your head about what industry Tania is in. And I want to challenge you to just go out there and do your due diligence and just research because you don't know what you don't know, but it's amazing women like Tania Donata who is making a change. So right now she may be Tania, Tania Donata to you, but in a few years, she's going to be that astronaut or she's going to be that woman making boss moves. So tap in with her now before, she, you know, before she hits that big old cuss and she's taken off like a rocket. So I hope you all have an amazing day. And I love to sign out by saying, Peace, love, and lots of blessings. <laughs> Remember, you are a masterpiece. You were created for a purpose, and there's no other person to be you than you. <laughs>